Welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's International Widows Day, and we're talking about celebrating widows. The theme for this year, according to the um, United Nations, is Invisible Women and Invisible Problems. And we've invited uh, Mr. Thompson here. He is the executive director of the NGO. It's Widows and Orphan Support Society of Nigeria. Uh, good morning, Mr. Thomas. Good morning, how are you? Fine. So this year, um, International Widows Day, uh, could you shed more light on, on the day for us? Okay. Um, International Widows Day was actually introduced to address poverty and injustice faced by widows and their children, especially in Africa countries. And uh, by its grace, the International Widow Day is being celebrated worldwide now. It was uh, um, recognized by United Nations in the year 2010. And every June 23rd, widows and their children are being celebrated. Okay, so Mr. Thomas, we know that um, according to the UN statistics, there are around 258 million widows worldwide, and that one in more one widow um, basically is poor. Um, could you tell us more about some widowhood practices and, you know, widowhood or abuse that we see here in Nigeria? Well, um, what my observation, widows here in Nigeria, uh, especially the vulnerable ones, are passing through a lot in the in in, in Africa country because we, by our observation most widows when they lose their husband uh, they hardly get help from the society only few NGO and the government is now coming up and uh, especially in this hard time when we have uh, COVID nineteen and all that the widows they pass through a lot but. Uh, I think awareness is coming to, to the public and to government and to NGOs now that widows are not to be neglected because they, are, they, are, they, 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 they are face a lot of humiliation challenges and the, the responsibility of we NGO is to take care of them. Especially widows and offer support society of Africa, we, we have lineup of programs for widows and uh, orphanage children. Likewise, the widow children. Thank you. All right. I, I want us to also speak a little bit more on the uh, types of uh, support systems that, uh, you know, should be created for widows in a society. The local uh, government level or the state level maybe and maybe on the federal level. Are there things that, um, you know, you, your organization suggests, you know, that should come into play to support widows in a society? Well, um, what I suggest, if um, the local government can build, build up their, a budget for widows, uh, because government, local government, they are the grassroots government. They can easily reach out to people. If they can build up budgets that cater for widows, that would be very fine. Some local government are doing well. But if other government can join, especially in this our time where things are difficult, if governments can join the, the NGOs to make a budget, like we NGO we have we have uh, we have budget for for widows. Every month we have program for widows. We have program a welfare program for widows. We have scholarship scheme for their children. We have back to school scheme for widows children. That back to school scheme. Is a program whereby we gather books, uh, uh, we gather books and uh, textbook, um, a size book, uh, bags, school bag, uh, school lunch bag. We get them ready and visit the widows and their children so that their children can return back to school. You know, so we have a back to school program for widows' children. So all these things, if local government can have a sort of budget that can support this program it will be very very fantastic it and, will be very um, fantastic all right finally i also so want to want to ask well but they, they, they need to do more yeah oh, well I, I think i would agree that you know some of these things should be created but i also want to ask you know because we're in nigeria 
And uh, there's uh, peculiar challenges that widows face uh, culturally and traditionally um, in certain states across Nigeria. Um, is there, you know, conversations on, on um, you know, ways with which these things can be put to an end completely or ways mm -hmm. through which a widow can protect herself and her family from some of these hey, traditional... Can you, can you come over? I'm, I'm not getting you to any place. Right. Can, can, you, can you come over? Uh, can you hear me can now? You, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so I'm asking if there are ways that widows can get better protection against some of the traditional and cultural um, actions that seem abusive to widows in the Nigerian society. We hear about things that they have to go through after their husbands uh, pass in the village. Uh, we hear about losing their property to their husbands, brothers. Sometimes they have to be married off to their husbands, um, you know, siblings or, or things like that. Is there ways that widows can be better protected against uh, certain Nigerian traditions and cultures? Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. This is a very beautiful, uh, it's a lovely question. Uh, I must say that uh, I expect this from you. Uh, the only way government, this thing, yeah, there is a lot of, we have some culture that we need to abolish, you know. Like, for instance, some, uh, uh, some widows, when they are, some women, when they lost their husband, the, the, the culture will say, you must marry the man. If you don't marry the man, you forfeit everything the man has. You don't have anything. They say you forfeit everything. You must marry the man. What about if there is no love between the brother that they are insisting that the woman must marry? If there is no love, what will happen? And there are cases where the brothers, we have conventious family. Family that are very conventious. You know, they will say, oh, the man is dead, so our brother is gone. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to take over. We have to take over. You can't manage the resources. We are the one that will manage the resources. So the woman will be asked to step aside. And in process, they will inherit all the properties. They will inherit all the properties, and the woman will start from zero one. So uh, what I'm trying to say is this. If government can put up a policy, that says, if a woman, if a man died, the property actually belongs to the, to the, uh, to the, um, to the, the family, to the woman and the children. The children and the uh, and the woman owns the property because they owns the man. So if we start having such kind of policy that says, once a man died. Whatever the woman, whatever the man holds, belongs to the wife and the children. So nobody will come from the blues and say, "Oh, I'm the, I'm the, uh, uh, the brother, or oh, I'm the sister. I want to take. Uh, I'm taking over this. I'm taking over the bedroom." Meanwhile, the man has a wife and has children. So. I think if uh, if we can have this policy in place that can protect women and children, just like in civilized world, you know, in civilized world, we women, we widows, the widows there, they hardly suffer because whatever happened, the government had provision for the for the widow and for the children. But here in Nigeria, you know, we have a lot of so many different culture. So all those culture, the government should abolish it. Right. They should abolish culture that say, oh, we will take the woman to the village, they will scrape her hair by force. And she must drink water. They say, yeah, if, the, if, the, if, the man, if the man is young, they will say, oh, this is very unusual. Why will this man die in a motor accident? So let's take the woman to the village. She must drink the water they used to bait the corpse of the man. That's terrible. Yeah. Women are subjected right. to a lot of problems. That's terrible. All right, that that's, uh... she must drink. She must drink from the water they used to bait the man. Just because the man died as a young man, no, anybody can die. Miss, at any Mr. Age. Thomas, indeed, we we do need stronger laws uh, to make sure that widows and their children uh, do not suffer like they currently do in Nigeria. Well, thank you very much, Executive Director, Widows and Orphans uh, Support Society of Africa.
Have a great day. Thank you so much. All right, that's where we end the show today on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, we've talked about a lot, the plight of widows, International Widows Day. Um, just to say, go out there, support a widow, support their children. And very important, however you can, because yeah. if we're waiting for those laws to be enacted, it will take a long time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in as little as we can, as little as we can help, let's always try to extend that love to widows around us in our community. And, and also don't be that wicked uncle. Or wicked uh, husband's brother. Um, you know, it's easy to talk about laws. You know, when they you know affect other people, but when you know it, it's time for you to play your role as a support system for late brothers, uh, family, uh, you know, and, and kids. Um, it's 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 good advice, you know, to men to ensure that they always step up. You know, play the role that you can play. If you can't pay their school fees, then at least find ways that you can support and protect them from uh, the ills of you know some of our cultures and traditions uh, in nigeria regardless of what it looks like um so yes be that person that should be able to step in and support yes and, and truly it's easier to say you know for women to own their own you know make their own bag and all of that but we know what the situation of the country is. You know how some men would rather have their wives stay at home and not work. So these other societal considerations are there. You know, just really to say, extend that hand of love and uh, hopefully that we can get better laws that would guarantee the rights of women, um, not just widows, but also people who are divorced because they, they face similar, um, similar challenges. All right. Stay with us. Uh, I'm back here, of course, at 9 a.m. with the uh, news brief. Uh, but for now, it's goodbye. And uh, join us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on uh, Facebook and Instagram. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.